Hello there. What's going on, everyone? Today, we're going to be talking about the future of X-Wing's epic and huge ship play under Atomic Mass Games. What do we think they're going to announce? Are they going to announce anything new for the epic and huge ship uh, style of play? And uh, fans of that, can they expect something new on February 3rd? Because there's some news coming very soon. I also want to thank Luxury Playstyle for sponsoring this video. Be sure to go over to LuxuryPlaystyle.com. Check out their amazing selection of full metal tokens for games like X-Wing and Arkham and L5R and Keyforge and all of these games. I also use them in Legion. Also, if you use my code VIP, you're going to save 15% off of your order. Orders of $35 or more are also going to get a free Krabok token thrown in as long as you use the code and that's a pretty awesome token if i don't say so myself all right so uh we we know that uh you know there's some things that are kind of still outstanding for the x-wing uh huge ship game well we know that they uh, you know tried to start re-releasing all of the new huge ships in 2.0 and that kind of came to a halt so i think the first question that's been on my mind for a while is are they going to finish with, with the huge ships. I mean, the huge ship conversion kit's nice if you don't mind playing with your old 1.0 stuff or if you don't want to buy that, I guess you can just do the huge ship conversion kit and put some Play-Doh on the, on the stands and pretend it's a it's a huge ship. I don't really recommend that because it'll probably fall off and knock something over and in, injure your gameplay. Maybe you could put a loaf of bread on there as long as it's not pre-sliced bread because if it's pre-sliced, it'll fall apart all over the place. So get yourself a nice baguette and uh, and then stick that on the little pot on the things and you can pretend that that's a Gazanti or you can pretend that it's a Raider or something like that. But in the interests of reality, we'll move forward with the conversation. Um, you know, the, the the Raider never actually came out. Uh, I wonder if that's something that they're going to want to do. Uh, the big reason I, I kind of get to this is because uh, Atomic Mass Games is at some point likely going to be rebranding re all of the Star Wars products, all of the X-Wing products, and getting rid of that Fantasy Flight Games logo and, and instead putting Atomic Mass Games on there. Uh, and now, what, usually when they do stuff like that, they don't like destroy existing inventory. They just continue to sell the existing inventory and put a hold on reprinting the new stuff. But supposedly, there's a whole lot of these Imperial Raiders uh, 2.0 uh, Raiders somewhere in a warehouse that just have never seen the light of day. They're probably still in a shipping container somewhere. Uh, and, and uh, you know, they probably want to sell those because it would be weird if they just kept those on the shelf and then, like, five years from now, they're like, oh, we better sell these now. And uh, then all of a sudden, like, people are new players of the game are like, who's Fantasy Flight Games and why are they, why is their logo on this product? Yeah. So I imagine they'll probably want to offload these at some point. Uh, but I also I think they they should consider you know redoing like the Gazanti and the GR seventy five and making sure we get all of the huge ships done uh, and and perhaps you know this is going to be one of those things that's motivated by how many people are actually interested in playing them how many people are actually buying this stuff or if they'll consider moving on to the other factions now I don't really uh, think we'll see a whole lot as far as first order. And, uh, and and resistance stuff. I, I, as far as huge ships, I think the first factions that we'll get are likely for the Clone Wars if we if they decide to make new stuff. Now, Star Wars Armada just recently got a Clone Wars release, and uh, you know a lot of people were like, well, what are they going to do for for the uh, for the Separatists? Because a lot of their stuff is big, but the hard sell transport is now uh, already like we know that FFG already had the rights to it. Asmodee already had the rights to go with the hard sell. They already have artwork for the hard sell transport now too. So I think that that's definitely a shoe in for uh, a possible huge ship for the separatists. Although I don't think it's as iconic or possibly even attractive on store shelves. So this one seems like it could be a little bit less likely. Um, you know, so I think there's a couple of different ways they could do this. They could certainly just repaint a sea rock also. I don't really want them to do that though. I think I'd rather have an all new ship, maybe something a little bit bigger. And this one would certainly have a different profile since its guns are pretty much only facing forward. It would be, uh, you know, different than some of those huge ships that have, uh, kind of like the Raider, how it's mostly facing forward. I think this one would be kind of behave uh, like that, um, but uh, without really that whole turret capacity. Uh, so I think this would be a fun one to be able to fly. You'd have to fly it right at your opponents. I think it would work well in the interests of uh, the way a lot of the, the, the epic combat has kind of progressed and a lot of the ships with the big broadsides and kind of wanting to, like the, how the CR-90 wants to kind of fly long ways around if it can, and this one wants to kind of cap the T on it. I think that would be a fun way to go. Uh, I think what's far more likely, though, is for the Republic to get the consular cruiser or that uh, C-70 charger um, 
Uh, I think that's definitely a more likely ship. It's definitely more iconic. It's the first ship we see in the Clone Wars, right? It's uh, that that Qui Gon Jinn, Obi Wan Kenobi flying on this thing on at the, you know at the very beginning of Episode One, uh, and then it, and it's the right size, you know. It's definitely the right size. It's just it, it's got. I think it, it. I think it just fires on all cylinders, and I think it's definitely a good way to go. The back is a little on the wider side, but I don't think it's that much wider than a, a CR ninety. Uh, as far as the engines are concerned, so I think you could still make this work without too much problem. But my my other question is, would they consider since Atomic Mass Games? And I've talked about huge ships before. If you've been watching my channel for a long time, this is not the first time you've seen me talk about huge ships in X Wing. But what I want to know is, are they thinking about doing something more of a grand gesture? Since it's AMG now, are they going to want to be like, hey, we want to we want to wow these people with our first release? Now I'm not talking about those three aces packs that are still coming because those are ffg right um but i'm talking about the first brand new thing that atomic mass and the whole new team and whoever that is like are they gonna be like all right guys we're coming at you we're coming at you big we're doing a star destroyer and x-wing no obviously they're not gonna do that it'd be like 19 feet long uh but what if they were to do some kind of bigger ships right like architons it's awfully big but it's not completely unreasonable uh, considering they did a Super Star Destroyer in Star Wars Armada that was much bigger than people thought they would ever do. Um, and they already have a kind of a sliding scale with the huge ships anyway. Uh, this or, I mean, look, people have already homebrewed the Nebulon B in X-Wing. Uh, and, you know, that, they were selling those. Uh, there's, a, you know, a, lots of people doing stuff like that. Um, and I know that there's already models for this in X-Wing too. So it, it could definitely work. It wouldn't be cheap though. Um, but it'd be beautiful, and, and sometimes big, beautiful models are, are the thing that get a lot of people's attention and get people at gaming stores and stuff to start asking questions, and I think, honestly, this is a probably a good time to start the R&D uh, and, you know, and the development of, and get something like this going, because by the time it actually comes out, people will be gaming in stores again, um, hopefully well before that, because you know, something like this could easily take a year to get out. But uh, but yeah, you'll definitely have people gaming in stores again. You'll you'll, you'll have conventions. Uh, if you start working on this now, uh, I don't know if we're gonna have Gen Con in 2021. At least not in the same way that we used to have Gen Con years and years ago. But uh, years and years ago, uh, just two years ago. But 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 still, um, you know, I, I think it'll be easily out in time for like you know once all of the conventions are back in full swing again too. So I, I like you know th this or Nebulon bees or or other. Larger ships, maybe a Gladiator Star Destroyer. That one might be a little too big, you know. But there's there there are definitely some larger ships that they could consider doing. I know a lot of people want hammerheads, which are a little smaller. This, but the problem is there's always some risk factor when you go into these really really big ships. But that's not the only way that they can continue to support huge ships in epic play, um, because like we saw with the Eta Two from uh, from the uh, Republic, um, there's some. Things that can they can put out for epic play that aren't huge ships that still are only legal in in those uh, no non tournament legal formats uh, and so you know like those docking rings they, they can, are are a great example of other things that they can consider doing and I think that's a fun way to go I'd love to hear what you guys think also we still have that giveaway going on right now for the twenty five dollar Amazon gift card you just have to leave me a comment let me know what you think and also be a subscriber uh, and that is actually going to be I'm going to be announcing the winner for that next week so. Stay tuned for that. I usually announce the winner uh, of the giveaways towards the end of my videos, so stay tuned for that. Uh, but we also have uh, structures, which uh, a lot of people may have forgotten about, or maybe they haven't forgotten about it. Or, but uh, but yeah, structures is something that they have already, obviously already planned for. Uh, structures are referenced on the Mark Sable closure card that uh, recently came out, and uh, has a lot of people thinking: Are they going to be doing some kind of space stations? Are they going to be doing stuff like that? We already have space stations in Armada. They are. They could do cardboard, um, and and also has some people asking: Is it going to be something like Heroes of the Aturi cluster, uh, and uh, that seems to be to me something that would be a really fun way to go. It'd be an alternate way to play. Uh, it'd be a great thing to work on during COVID too. Like if it were to come out now, it'd be a great time because a lot of people are still not able to go out. Um, you know, a lot. I'd say most people probably aren't aren't going out at least like they used to. Uh, you know, there's some people doing limited gaming, or if you have a bubble, you know, or family gaming and stuff like that, but like a cooperative thing. And let's face it, who has a close relationship with the X-Wing flight path system but a Star Trek attack wing? Right? Remember, somebody mentioned this in my live stream the other day. WizKids has, uh, has this coming out soon. The Star Trek Alliance cooperative miniatures game. It's basic. It's, it's attack wing. All it is is it's attack wing uh, that has like a, it's a special attack wing set. 
and it's uh and it's going to have some minis that's going to basically be attack wing, but it's a cooperative like a Heroes of the Aturi cluster, basically. Uh, and it's going to have extra expansions that you can buy that are only going to work in Star Trek Alliance. But a lot of the Star Trek Alliance, I think I think they said um, most of the stuff from this will work with attack wing, but not everything from attack wing will work with this because it's maybe a little overpowered or whatever. Uh, but basically, it's the same thing. It's just an alternate mode. It's the same thing that I've always been wanting for the X-Wing ground game, which I wish they would do that. I, maybe they will someday. It's a great way to get at-ats on the table. But all of that would be epic play. It would be very, very fun uh, thematic play. And, uh, and, and a cooperative experience could be pretty fun, especially if you want to have really big ships on the board. I would love to have you and a couple of buddies go up to take down an Architans. You know, like, that'd be super fun. Like, everybody bring three ships. You know, we're taking down an Architans today. And then, boom, 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 we bring out the giant uh, monstrosity. Or maybe for, like, uh, in my local store, we used to run uh, big, big X-Wing celebrations on Super Bowl Sunday during the morning. We'd all get together and uh, do some kind of huge scenario. I've got uh, battle reports for a lot of those. Or some of my earliest videos, as a matter of fact. But uh, imagine, like, running, like, two Architans on, like, a, like, four play mats all pushed together and you've got like the whole store and everybody's there and everybody's trying to take them down and you've got like the one person like running the Architons and like you can't destroy my my capital ships with your beauty efforts rebel scum you know like like I think it'd be really fun stuff so I'd love to see more epic and huge ship support and I'm wondering if AMG is going to talk about that uh, if you guys aren't already aware AMG Atomic Mass Games who is taking over the Star Wars miniatures games including X-Wing Armada and Legion will be doing their first Star Wars specific live stream on February 3rd at 1 p.m. Pacific time on their Twitch channel. I will be doing a watch along party. So if you would prefer to stay on YouTube, you can hang out with me or you can watch in both places, whatever you want. Uh, but yeah, well, I'm just going to be bringing you the news for that. We'll be hang I'll be do live streaming before, during and after. So we'll do like a little after party after that as well. And, uh, and just talking about all the cool stuff that's available. So uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully it'll be fun. Hopefully we'll get some news. Hopefully we'll get, um, you know, something uh, more than just a roadmap, although I do expect it to be mostly uh, about the process of Star Wars and, and optimistic and like, and we're going to give you guys great stuff and you know, you got to give us time to get going. I think it's going to be a lot of that, but I think uh, there's also the chance that we'll probably get those, you know, at least those Aces packs talked about a little bit and maybe a hint for the future. And this wouldn't this be a fun one? Let me know in the comment section. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Also, check out the links in the uh, description below. You can get some of our cool merch like uh, our Boba Fett neck gaiters, our Darth Maul masks and gaiters. We've got faction specific uh, things like here's my Imperial mask right here. Uh, or my Chimera shirt. You can get all kinds of cool stuff like that in the, the description below at, at the Teespring store. So check that out. Or you can hop in my Discord and join the community there. Or check out Crabock.com or uh, all those things. Also, big thanks to my patrons. You guys are awesome. And I couldn't do this without your continued support. So thank you so much for continuing to support the channel. And uh, as always, have a great day.